Is uh, Montgomery J. Claxon in? Well, uh, that all depends. You from the finance company, the Department of Building and Safety, or Power and Light Company? Neither. I'm the mailman. I've got a special delivery for him. Well, as long as you are not interested in collecting, inspecting, or disconnecting, I am Montgomery J. Claxton. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Calvin, I wonder who'd be sending me a special delivery letter. You might try reading it. Uh, let's see here. Dear Montgomery, arriving in town tomorrow morning, very anxious to see you. I'll call you from the airport as soon as I get in. Signed, Boo Boo. Who's Boo Boo? Well, let's see here. Boo Boo. Boo Boo. That's a mighty unusual name. Boo Boo. Boo Boo. It sounds like someone shelling peas on a bass drum. <laughs> Let's see now, when I was playing football back at Tennessee State, there was a lot of fellas on the team that had unusual nicknames. I wonder if this boo-boo could be one of the fellas I played football with. Well, maybe you're right, Colonel. <laughs> but if you are, this here boo-boo is the sweetest smelling fullback I ever run into. <laughs> Is this funny? The funniest thing I've ever seen in the newspaper. <laughs> Montgomery, what's so funny in the comics this morning? Well, it's not in the comics, honey. It's right here on the front page. See here, enraged husband attacks wife and sister-in-law with golf club. Use the driver. <laughs> you know, I always thought that was a three-iron situation. <laughs> very funny, brother-in-law, very funny. Maggie, did you happen to read about that 45-year-old man whose wife caught him running around with a 22-year-old girl? Where was that, in the sports page? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that, sister. It's just terrible. A man by the age? Hell, sister, I'm not surprised. It's just like on the farm. It's always the oldest rooster that you have to chase out of the hen house. And if I were you, sister, I'd keep an eye on that old broiler here. Now, wait a minute here. I'm a married man. How dare you accuse me of post-nasal activities? You don't have to worry about me. I'm the one with the true love and devotion. Maggie Bell, I never loved no one else but you. Montgomery Claxton, I put up with you for 25 years, and I never loved no one else but you. Well, I worship the very ground you walked on. You bum. And Montgomery, if I ever hear that you so much as looked at another woman, I'll really fix you. Well, as much as I enjoy this charming chit-chat with you lovely ladies, I have to go down to the office. I'll see you later. Huh. What got into him? He usually never leaves the house till we have to put him out on the street with the trash. <laughs> It just so happens I'm expecting a very important business call from an old football chum of mine. Goodbye. Well, how do you like that Maggie Bell and her sister? Suggesting that I would ever have anything to do with another woman. Why, well, I'm the one man who... <laughs> Must see the Tennessee Red Green now. Claxton Real Estate, Colonel Montgomery J. Claxton speaking. Montgomery, this is Boo Boo. The woman, I think. Ah, uh, Boo Boo. Boo Boo. Oh, Boo Boo. Didn't you get my letter? Yeah, but I don't know who you are. I thought you were a football player. Montgomery, honey, you must be fooling. You couldn't have forgotten me. <laughs> Montgomery, I'm Boo Boo. I know you're Boo Boo, but Boo Boo Hoo Boo. Boo Boo Winters, Evelyn Winters from back home. Oh, yes, that's right. I'm fooling here. Uh, how are you, Boo Boo? Oh, Montgomery, I know it's been a long time, but you couldn't have forgotten me and your sacred promise. Oh, my uh, sacred promise. Oh, of course I couldn't have forgotten that. I remember it like it was yesterday. No, that's better. Now, listen, Montgomery, I want us to get together as soon as possible. 
Yeah, yeah, let's get together here. I'm staying at the Regis Hotel. I want you to be in the Tropicana room at 2 o'clock p.m. sharp tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'll be glad to see you, Boo-Boo. Bye-bye, Boo-Boo. Well, that was funny, hearing from a good old Boo-Boo. I wish I knew who in the world she was. Hi, right, Colonel. I just came by to see if you found out who Boo-Boo was. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, Calvin. Now, listen. Do you remember any of the gals back home named Boo-Boo Winners? Well, let's see here. That was a long time ago. As I recall, you were quite a ladies' man in those days. Yeah, we were both a couple of hot shots when we were rooming together back at Tennessee State. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really had the sharp clothes, didn't I, Calvin? 23, Skidoo. Hi. Oh, you kid. Chicken inspector. <laughs> yeah, this is the place, and there are the girls. <laughs> How do do? <laughs> I finally did get a girl that night. Yeah, you thought it was a potted plant, but it turned out to be horse face hensier. <laughs> Whatever happened to her? As I recall, she got a job tramping in Fresno, California. You know, with those big king-size earth pads of hers, she could trample two barrels simultaneously. <laughs> Wait a minute, Colonel. Wait a minute. I'm just getting a brainwave here. Boo Boo Winters. Evelyn Winters. Her papa owned a cement plant. That was the gal you used to go with before you married Maggie Bell. Calvin, that's right. It's coming back to me now. Evelyn Winters. Oh, she was a real beauty. Yes, I remember the year of the Cement Mixers Convention. She was voted Miss Ready Mix of 1932. We went steady for a year. That was over 25 years ago. I took her every place. Football game. People play the nuttiest games. <laughs> Sidewalk cafes. Bicycle races. Yeah, she married some doctor and went out west, didn't she? I remember you were pretty broke up about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Losing Evelyn really hit me hard. I wrote her after she was married, but she never answered me. I was desperate. Wah, <laughs> wah. First, I was going to join the Foreign Legion, and then I was going to South America and spend the rest of my life working in the mines. You were, huh? Yeah, but then Maggie Bell moved into town, and I realized I didn't have to leave the country to suffer. <laughs> well, I wonder why she calls you up. Oh, I don't know. I guess she and her husband are in town and want to chit-chat about old times. Funny thing, she said something about a sacred promise I made. I wonder what she meant by that. And that's the whole story, Reverend Thomas. Except that right after I was married, he wrote me this letter. I've got it right here. Oh, this part is so beautiful. Even though you've spurned me for another, I will never forget you, my darling. And I promise that should you ever find yourself free, I will be waiting forever. That is my sacred promise. Yes. That is very beautiful. Well, I've been a widow for these past two years, and I know that he's never forgotten his promise. So I've come all the way back here from California to marry my old flame, Montgomery Claxton. Well, I think it's wonderful that he's waited all these years. I'll be glad to help. Wonderful. I'm setting the wedding for 2 p.m. tomorrow right here in the Regis Hotel. I'll be there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodness, I have so many things to do. Now, let's see now. Uh, quick, uh, give me the hotel floor. Yes, madam. Right, very well. Orange blossoms, of course. Carnation. And what? Magnolias. Well, I don't know where I'll get magnolias this time of year, but I'll do my best. Gutenberg, Prentice, Berg talking. <laughs> How many invitations? 
Well, it's pretty short notice, but we'll try. Now, uh, what is that name again? Paris Caterers? Oui. Tomorrow, eh? Okay, just a minute. Five layer cake. Tomato aspic. Waldorf salad. How many grease? How many grease? Are you kidding? Okay, okay, how many grease it is? Well, that's bad. Now for the dressmaker. Picture me upon your knee, just be for two and two for tea, just me for you and you for me alone. You have such a lovely voice, Sister Sue. It's a pity you had to stop your music lessons back in Nashville. Yeah, yes. The sheriff got out an injunction against me. He claimed my singing was making his bloodhounds reckless. <laughs> Come on, let's go in the dressmakers here. I have them sitting today. We'll go right back to the dressing room. I know the way. Now, remember, it has to be ready tomorrow before 2 p.m. <laughs> Fine. I'll just pop into the dressing room and change. Oh, I still have to find someone to act as bridesmaid. Dum dum da dum 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 da dum <laughs> Just a minute now, sister. This dressing room is occupied. The nerve of that old frump barging in here without so much as a buy your leave. Excuse me, but you look so familiar. Aren't you Susan Culpepper from Nashville? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I used to live there. Well, don't you remember me? I'm Evelyn Winters. We lived in the White House up on the hill. Little Evelyn Winters? Well, well, come on in. <laughs> oh, didn't you have a sweet little sister, Susan? Yeah, yeah, that was Maggie Bell here. How'd it do? Matter of fact, I'm living with her now. I gotta help support that fat head she married. <laughs> but why in the world are you doing here, Evelyn? I heard you was living in California. Well, honey, I'm a widow now, and I came back here to get married again. Oh, a wedding? How romantic. <laughs> yes, honey. You don't know how happy I am I run into you like this. I don't know a soul here. I wonder if you girls would do me a favor. A favor? Why, we'd be delighted. I wonder if you'd be bridesmaids at my wedding. Why, of course we would. Oh, bridesmaids, Sister Sue, what a happy occasion this is going to be. <laughs> Yes, Calvin, the more I think about that secret promise Boo Boo talked about, the more worried I get. You know, I'm going to have to look up the carbon copy of that letter I sent her and see what I said. You mean you got a copy of that letter? Oh, of course, boy. I used to make two copies of all my love letters. You made as many sacred promises as I did. You had to be sure you can keep them straight. <laughs> Tell you what, let's go down in the cellar of the apartment house here. See if we can't find out where I got my old records. Yeah, here we are. Now look here. Let's see. 1929, 30, 31. Ah, this is it right here. Now, you look through these and I'll look through the rest. We're bound to find it. Yeah, okay, girl. Hmm. Well, what do you know? Here's a sacred promise. On my sacred promise, I will pay back Calvin Burnside the $10 I owe him, signed Montgomery. Jimmy, that you just supposed to be looking at sacred promises, Calvin, not a sacred IOUs. <laughs> now, let's get going here. Say, wait a minute. This is it. Here it is, right here. Hmm. Uh, well, so there it is. There it is. If you find yourself free, I will be waiting forever. That is my secret promise. <laughs> Calvin, that dumb boo-boo thinks I'm going to marry her. You marry this gal, Colonel, and Maggie Bell might be just a little provoked at you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to marry her, Calvin. I've been married once, and the Constitution says you can't put a man in double jeopardy. <laughs> Where are you going now, Colonel? To see my lawyer, Oliver Wendell Clutch. Hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, what, uh, uh, what do I do about the girl? Don't put it off any longer. 
The thing to do is to tell her point blank that you're already married and you will have nothing further to do with her. Be firm and direct, my good friend. You're right. I'll be firm and direct. And I'll get this thing just once and for all. I'll go over and see her right this moment. Ah, no, my friend. <laughs> when you're breaking bad news to a woman, always use the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell's invention certainly cuts down on the bloodshed. Judge, you are a genius. Yes, but a modest one. <laughs> Oh, Montgomery, how romantic of you to call. Now, you didn't forget, did you? It's 2 p.m. tomorrow. Yes, I know that, uh, and that's what I want to talk to you about, Evelyn. Now, I've been thinking about this, and I don't see any reason to drag it out. I want to see you and get this thing over with tonight. Oh, my goodness, Montgomery, dear. You're just as impetuous as ever. <laughs> I've already made plans. Well, you just have to change them. I'll see you tonight. Tonight? Tonight. Heavens, he's so impatient. Now I'll have to move the whole thing up. Give me that phone. Mr. Fancy hotel old Boo Boo was staying at. Uh, excuse me, my good man. Can you kind of tell me where the flamingo room is, perchance? Oh, you must be Colonel Claxton. Yes, but uh, how did you? Uh... The flamingo room is right down the hall, Colonel. You lucky devil. Here I did. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Calvin, the man knew me. Well, such is the price of fame. I don't know, Colonel. I guess Boo Boo's going to be pretty broken up when you tell her how things are. Yes, Calvin, I'd just like to break it to her like this, but look out, Calvin. <laughs> hmm, must be some fancy affair in the room later on. <laughs> Anyhow, as I was saying, uh, you know, I hate to break it to her like this, but it's a better way than letting her go ahead and do something silly, like make a lot of plans for a big wedding. Now, you two stand right here where everybody can see you. Uh, be ready on that organ. <laughs> do I look all right? Oh, I do hope everything goes off well. There, there. I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, where's the lucky groove? Uh, he should be here any minute. Well, there it is, Colonel. You going in and get it over with? Yes, Calvin, might as well go in and face the music. <laughs> Lover boy, cute! Let's go, Maggie Bell!
I do believe I smell magnolias. <laughs> so after the police raided the wedding and booked a whole bunch of us for disturbing the peace, things quieted down somewhat. How did you get out, Kathy? Well, they decided it was just a family quarrel, Gloria, and let us go after we promised to pay for the fixtures that the colonel broke with his head. And what happened to Mrs. Boo-Boo? Oh, she hot-footed it back to California on the next plane. Well, uh, what about Mr. Colonel Claxton and his wife? Did they patch things up? Patch things up? Huh. Trying to patch up that marriage would be like trying to put a bandage on a scrambled egg. <laughs> right now, the colonel and his wife are down in Judge Clutch's office. They're having a suit for separate maintenance. Separate maintenance? Yeah, but the colonel is being generous about the thing. All he's asking for is $25 a week, silverware. I hope this experience hasn't changed your opinion about marriage in general. No, it hasn't, Gloria. I feel the same way. Anytime I get the urge to sniff the orange blossoms, I suddenly develop an allergy to holy monotony. <laughs> Considering your many years of happy married life together, I think that the best thing all around is a reconciliation. <laughs> well, Montgomery, I guess you really didn't mean to get mixed up with that boo-boo. Of course not, Maggie Bell, honey. I guess I'm willing to give our marriage another try if you are. Well, all right, Montgomery. I'm sorry about the misunderstanding. I apologize for my part, too, Montgomery. Now, now, it was really my fault anyway. Should have told you about Boo Boo a long time ago. No, Montgomery, it was my fault. I'll never give you a chance to explain. Now, Maggie Bell, I won't have you taking the blame. I was the one who started this whole thing. Montgomery, when I say it was my fault, it was my fault. Now, that's an to it. Now, listen here, woman. Don't tell me it's your fault when I know it was my fault. How dare you trying to say it was your fault when my sister is trying to say it was her fault. Let me do my own apologizing. Do I tell you how to be a nasty old woman? Montgomery, don't you dare scream at my sister while she's helping me take the blame. How dare you take the blame while I'm taking the blame? You're only taking the blame to make yourself look good. You old boob. Don't you yell at me, Miss Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Let me I'll teach him how to apologize. Thank <laughs> you. 